Welcome to Reflections, a program where we discuss values and virtues for the transformation of the individual and the society in general. I am Father George Ehusani, and I have with me in the studio today my friend, Dr. Sam Amadi of the Abuja School of Governance. Of Social and Political Thought. Of Social and Political Thought. Mm -hmm. Abuja School of Social and Political Thought. You're welcome. Thank you. For Just that. a few days ago, you people had an outing, which I watched on TV. Mm. And some people were very angry. I mean, people like DJ Yade and Ju, uh, uh, people like uh, NLB and others were very angry about this. Said, How did you provoke them this much? <laughs> well, uh, it's, uh, the pro provocation is probably uh, self-generated. Oh, is that generated <laughs> from inside themselves? No, generated from the system. I mean, well, it, it was a program on looking at um, the electoral system. Are you? Uh, Daryl, who died, one of our comrades. So we have this memorial. In oh, it was a memorial for Ariel. Ariel. Yeah. So we have series looking at electoral management. And so the issue was on INEC. And again, everybody's mad. Uh, we thought that after 2019, like 2023 election, then Edo promised to be good. The Edo basically sealed hope, every hope. So those are the optimists. Uh, we have, they just, a pessimist. They just said, I want you guys that this will not work. 2027 will be terrible. And I said, even even you, they, they just said that you were very optimistic, and that and that he said this with, that all the indications are this will not work, and that you are very optimistic. Well, we thought that uh, having gotten the twenty twenty two twenty twenty two transmission, and of course all the um, promises by Yakub and uh, his uh, uh, our, our, our friend, friend our uh, friend Okoye, Okoye and um, I, I had a guided optimism that look with our vigilance with. And we were almost selling through. Everything was going on well until uh, Yakub and uh, his people decided to shut Well, I mean, uh, I listened to the interactions that went on there. And uh, I call you because I want us to discuss the imperative of ele another electoral reform. I mean, what happened in 2022 Electoral Act fell short of the waste um, report. report. Fell short of the waste report. And now, in the 21st century, in fact, we are going to a level of AI now, so it shouldn't even be a matter of discussion whether we should have electronic transfer of uh, elections. It shouldn't, yeah. it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be something to discuss. It should be, it should, for it should be taken for granted. At least, I think, even the 2023 Electoral Act took it for granted. I 2022. Mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a disgrace that judges basically got it, you know, incinerated all the hopes by arguing that, look, I could sit back. I mean, that was my biggest scandal as a lawyer, as a law teacher, that any lawyer could argue that a regulator went to the National Assembly, asked that a provision should be installed yes. to require a the pulling unit. Most of those provisions came from the recommendation yes. of INEC. Because INEC had already started advancing in electronic device capture, Data capture, data capture machine. So they had already been progressing, and they got to a point where the biggest progress now was real-time transmission. So mm -hmm. that when you see the the, the, the IRF report, you cannot now collate nonsense. Now the Supreme Court and the courts argue that well, IRF transmission is not collection. We know, but the safeguard built into it is that if the time we sign off the result at the polling unit. Because mm -hmm. results are determined at the polling unit, not the right. question center. No. That's the anomaly Nigeria introduced. Why should you have results? People voted, results are counted, they are declared, everybody knew who won in their polling unit. And the agents sign off on those results. And the president officer sign off on those results. Those results are immediately posted on the IRF. That's how it's supposed so to be. So the world sees that this result has come in. Then you now argue that afterwards, Electoral officers will now collect from different wards, different units, and go to local government. And then somebody will start fighting, uh, break bottle, stop somebody, rewrite it, change it. Then that becomes the result. I mean, that's. And, and that's, we have even had, inclu including stupid. academics who say that they wrote that under the arrest. You remember? Exactly. We've that in one. So the question then is why did the court argue that INEC issued a guideline, portion to a constitution? that says INEC should make guidelines. Now, look at how it works in terms of administrative law uh, processes. The legislature can make the law, or they can defy delegated legislation. They cannot say, we don't know the details of So you process. make your... You make the rules under yes. authorization. That becomes a law. law. That becomes now, law. Being a law, 
you can't walk away from it post event. You can only change it before, before. the event. Now before the voting, I think came many times. People are even saying I think is not going to transmit. I think said, no, we will. Till we will. the eve, till the voting. eve of voting, they kept I keep saying we will, we will, we will. And then the court says, I think you are free to walk away. I mean, it's a shame. At that point, the judiciary lost common sense, lost erudition. It's I've argued as a PhD, respectable PhD, that anybody who makes a, a good case that a regulator issues a rule binding third party interests, as what you call detrimental reliance, people rely on that rule. The regulator can walk back on that rule without going to a rule making process. That's there's no law under the head. Okay, so that's what killed the process. Then the question is why did I make what's the motivation? Why would a regulator of election whose job should be be an impartial uh, or arbiter be the one to shut down his IRF and have we been told the glitch that we were told? They said there was a glitch. I, I, has, has, it, has that glitch been explained to no, Nigerians? There's no glitch. You see, INEC said there was a glitch. In all the cases filed against INEC, they didn't prove any glitch. And again, AVS, Amazon Web Service, every government, more than 100 to something governments are hosted on it. Every operation, that's actually what makes uh, Zoka, the guy, what's his name? A rich man, okay? It's not because of, you know, Washington Post. It's actually AVS, Amazon, because all CIA ever was on it. They said that it has never crashed. Only once throughout, like, a couple of years, and they located the exact place where it happened. So this is the point. You can't claim a glitch. You can recreate the, the history. They go back to back end and tell you what happened. So nothing was glitch. Two. My next argument was to say, we are free to say we would use the game. And by the way, uh, IRF transmission is not a collection. Supreme Court says, yes, you're right. No evidence, and they're not arguing on it. There was no glitch. The glitch was human. They gave them wrong password, and they couldn't upload the results. Simple as short. Now, the same my neck goes to the tribunal to say, oh, you know what? We want to click clean this receptacle, respect, uh, receptacle to do another election. Allow us a court grants them order to remove those things, and the court did not supervise and make sure that those things are intact. You get the point. So the, this is what it is: the INEC composition, as it is, guarantees rigged election. Guarantees rigged election. Guarantees. If there's if election is free and fair, is a happenstance. It's oddity. It's just wow. The real thing because you ask desperate politicians. Who are running for second term or first term to appoint the, the man who would referee in a third world country where um, outcomes of being in power is like life and death? So, I think in all the elections since 1999, in all, every election is done by INEC with the support. And that's why, in one of my uh, uh, talks, I said the strategy for good election in Nigeria is very simple bribe INEC. Commandeer the military, security, bribe the judiciary. Simple. Three, two bribe step and one coercion. Coerce the military. You are in charge, commander in chief or governor, or you have money. You buy the se police security. They provide security for the rigging. You buy INEC officials. Somebody came out. Somebody came out recently. Is it in River State or something? To describe how they used to rig elections in the government house. Did they just write INEC? So, by the way, in some point, point INEC will supply alternate resource sheets. In the case, <laughs> you see, so, so, and then you allow fully paid up party members, fully paid up in a high partisan divisive set like ours. So, the guy who ran the election in the, 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 the resident officer, uh, electoral officer, electoral commissioner says, Yes, I'm a cousin of Ace of Wiki. Yes, I, I am part of him. But you know what? I can do my job. How can that happen? Now, no, co you, no conflict of interest. No conflict of, couldn't you say, okay, you're a national commissioner. The only one is not in this election. We step you out. Step down. Let another days, person come there. Come there. After they go back to your work. I mean, simple administrative process to safeguard integrity. That is how the chairman couldn't do anything. They sat there and the election was rigged again. Clear. The IRF, the result in IRF is different. And three, four days after, evidence, I can prove it. They start changing the result again. So, so, so everything about the electoral system. I, I heard it's all rocket science. The, the, the manipulation is crude and elementary. I heard NLB 
discussing also about the Kogi. And Kogi. she was very, very angry about what happened and how the court did just ignored evidence as mm -hmm. far as she was so concerned. So there are two theaters of absurdity. One is the INEC, which is a quasi-judicial outfit, because the INEC is a, is a adjudicatory platform. Mm -hmm. They, they rig elections themselves. They support politicians to rig elections. The second theater of absurdity is the courts. Now, look at it this way. Even by the rules, the court says, oh, if you're going to comply with an election, you have to front load the complaint, mm -hmm. front load the and, statement and, of the man. And you need INEC. The statement of the man who rigged the election against you, mm -hmm. you have to obtain it by not by duress, not by force, voluntarily. I have this little period of time. And not just that you're going to make this statement. You have to obtain all the evidence comprehensive before you file. So first, they have asked you... No, that front floating thing is just an impossibility. They have asked you, don't enter. Again, they are not going to receive any evidence. Even if it is glaring, clear, official custody, if it was not already front loaded. So the INEC now tells you, I'm not going to give you... Then you go to the same court to say, order INEC to give us... Until they are so thin, so thin The court will give the order, and for two weeks, INEC will not give you anything. And the court will not enforce the order. This is real. It's not like uh, uh, speculation. So the court sits back there, allow you to, to be taken to the scabbard, to be butchered. And the court basically adds in Parima to uh, you know, signs of, um, you know, this very you know, gruesome okay. violation of So, justice. Sam, we have seen all the, we are seeing all these mm -hmm. loopholes mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. exploited by, um, Politicians that are mischievous, that are, you know, whatever, who are prone to rig elections. Mm -hmm. They can already see the loopholes. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do about it? Is there a need for a new uh, review uh, of the Electoral Act? Or are we to bring back and reform the Waste Report, update it, and, and push for its adoption? I think that... Um there should be a national consensus, which is difficult in Nigeria, to say, just dismantle this INEC, end their tenure, those commissioners, they have eaten enough, they should just go home, okay? They have eaten enough? Yes, they have, they should go home. If you don't create a new INEC according to ways, which is basically... A new, a new electoral commission that is really independent. That's according to ways, independent in first appointment, there's no basis, in fact, Jonathan, who failed to Im implement ways because he suffered, uh, when the came mm -hmm. in, he, failed. he has now come back to say it's, it's totally preposterous to allow incumbents appoint IREC. So it doesn't make sense. He has admitted it doesn't make any sense. Now, Uwez says follow a, a somewhat like judicial officers. The, the difference there is that not be on serenity, people apply. The NJC kind of situation, mm -hmm. harvest these applications, go through the normal process of, of uh, proofing, and then recommend to be appointed by the Council of State. A recommendation. That means they don't have any choice. These are the two people or one person that's number one. So the three things happen here. It does not mean that the people suddenly become saints. It simply means that you have taken out the incentive for him to be loyal to anybody. He can now choose to. To do the, he can choose to do the right thing or to be corrupt, thing. but, but not that no he's pressure. under any pressure. Nobody appointed, the president did not appoint him. He got it on a merit-based process. And then the National Assembly confirms. Again, I always also recommended stakeholding INEC, meaning okay. like MBA, MBA, journalists, mm -hmm. women and uh, women council. Yes. Khan, maybe yes. things like that, uh, different people, Islamic discourse. So what that helps to do is that you have what the economists call transaction costs. You have expanded the cost of collusion. So if you're going to... If they are going to do anything mischievous, they, to, they need to consult so, so many... This, and this book comes from diverse, mm -hmm. you know, in, in interest groups. So you have to be a complete one-party state where the emperor, everyone has now an emperor worshipper. You know, you have to be something close to Nero or Rome or something. But all the these diverse groups, CAD, NBA, NMA... To agree to rig in favor of one person. All of them. So they consider the island. And they have also representative of political parties, maybe the ruling party and mm -hmm. two or so major opposition parties. So what they are trying to do really is to make it 
more difficult. And then you improve the administrative process. INEX makes rules like a proper rulemaker. Now, like, take for example, what I've been telling like this for since 2019. You are a regulator. Regulators are known by due process. They don't just decide, INEX has decided. They go through hearings and they publish. Now, take for example what in the US now. You will see counties that are electoral managers, boards, call them boards, elected boards. They are elected. They sit three to four to decide whether to count ballot wise if maybe somebody if there's protests. a tie or something. Those decisions are reviewable because they are made under due process, what you call in the administrative law I teach rulemaking on record. So you, you decide the debate, everybody knows who voted for it's three four. So you cannot go to court to sue to challenge that decision making. Now, INEC, you hear that INEC will meet, maybe they talk in their bedroom or whatever, and the chairman comes and announces that INEC has resolved that. So that's not how. So, apart from appointing people who are not partisans, you also create a process where what they are deciding, the process for making decisions are clear and reviewable. Parties make submission and they hear them. So that's why it's called a regulatory hearing. They are boards, they are quasi judicial, they make decisions that are affect people's interests, and they make it publicly, openly. When you do this, therefore, you are creating the sense that this INEC is not another administrative unit of the presidency. So your recommendation is yes. that the way the persons that function in INEC, mm -hmm. the way they are constituted, mm -hmm. the, the way they are elected. Competition is a big problem. With that, yeah. you have already compromised 80%. Mm -hmm. And that the sitting president cannot be the one and, uh, appointing the INEC chairman as he appoints ministers. Exactly. And secondly, when he then appoint an INEC chairman, the INEC chairman has an obli uh, the commission has obligation of open. So Father George can, can attend a hearing mm -hmm. and hear how INEC is going to make a decision as to election. Those rules they issue come through consultations, which they will not be part of. So everybody knows that, look, in this matter of who, who should run an election, INEC we follow a due process. These are the rules that will guide them. Detailed rules. For example, we now know that for, uh, the, the law says, Section 56 or so says, INEC can cancel an election result for social and so reason. The rules will go for that as to play the procedure. So maybe a party will petition. And I could call a board. A number of things went. A number of things went wrong, even with the imperfect electoral acts that yes. we have. Yes, and we could have still gotten. Yeah, up to because 80 because the law allowed the chairman of INEC to wait for is it six seven days before conclude? But they, they never wait for. Open, now there were complaints. I mean, everybody people came out complain mm -hmm. and complain mm -hmm. about the the results, mm -hmm. and they say we shall we shall we shall we, we, we shall attend it. We, we shall it. attend to it. We shall attend to it. Then he went ahead and announced it. After, after announcing, they never attend to anything. You see, I, NX concept of their work is wash your hand off, collect, declare, wash off. Now, some people are saying that INEC should be, um, INEC, INEC should be one of those that you sue. If INEC has to go defend the result, why do you have to face your advice, uh, adversary? And then INEC that colluded, INEC is like, we are just a witness. No, because, you see, because the INEC people, you know, it's like, we are running a system we don't understand. You know, the problem with us, we, we borrow models. We don't, we don't really practice them. INEC officials, their brief will be to go and present how they conduct election. So if there's a suit between A and B, INEC's involvement will be as the one who had the election to present what they did. Now, there are two ways it can happen. You can sue INEC for failure of INEC to do Correct. carry out its activity or carry out wrongly. So it's a suit INEC is coming to defend. So I can say INEC was a, was biased in the rule they made. And they need INEC to defend themselves defend. on that basis. They come and say, look, that's not true. This is how we did it. If I sue Mr. B on the basis that he didn't win, INEC's job is to come and present what they did. But they are not really adversary to me. The adversary to our first contestant. So the point is that the, the, the judicial clarity is missing in all this. Is INEC always defending results declared? Mm -hmm. INEC can declare, defend results if it has gone to do process. For example, the first thing INEC should do, and that's what you see the boards do. If you look at what happened in uh, Bush Agor in 2000, the problem was Miami, uh, the, the county, the county. We are in Florida. We are Secretary of State Catherine, I think. 
There were issues around child ballot, ballots that were not clear. I do read them, or were punched wrongly. So the woman, as the Secretary of State, which is the person who conducted the election in that state, made the determination. So they had the board met, and it, it, they were, the picture was very you know, graphic. They were always looking at it. You see, they, it took time. And they invited the lawyers of the, of the Democrats, and, and they filed in their briefs. And they decided I made a decision to count those ballots. Now, what the, my professor then, Larry Soma, Harvard professor, took to the Supreme Court of years was a review of that judicial decision in, the, Florida. in Florida. So the Supreme Court looked at it and affirmed what they did. That way it took five years, five days to finish it. They didn't come and say, they have to first make a determination themselves, go through the process, and they counted the thing, and finally said, having gone through the process, this is our decision. So there was a process of review internally to INEC. Now, you, you, you are so active, saying, yeah. so you are active saying, in yeah. civil society. Yes. We are in 2024. We are talking of how do we sanitize the processes before 2027. I think if if yeah. something has not started now, Can it? what do you expect? Well, it's typical of Nigerian politicians that even P2B them, uh, mm. Atiku them, who are quote-unquote, victims of what we're talking about today, have not really raised up the ante about institutional change. Everybody is thinking, maybe I can get more votes, okay? So it looks like the problem was not the electoral system. The problem was maybe uh, we didn't campaign well. So if they had started day one, what we should be doing now, and it's easy, look at the way the president got up, lost past the National Assembly. Within 24 hours? Nothing stops us today, and many of the constitution in less than one week, to truncate this INEC and panel a new INEC in light of ways and these experiences. If, but look at the, the big elephant in the room. All the politicians are under some witchcraft that somehow they can find their way through INEC. So you look at opposition parties, opposition politicians, as they are planning to go to election, they are all talking to INEC. I met one of the victims of the last election, the top guy. I told you, oh, the chairman deceived me. Oh, he, chairman promised him? Promise him that he will, he will do free and fair, allow them. That's the point. So, and I said, how do you trust the chairman? How do you trust a man who has done all these things? You trust him. He deceived me. That's the problem. They are all thinking that somehow they have a back channel. And they probably, look, Nigerians are perennial optimists. Optimists. For election. Oh, once election, oh, no, now. Look at people are saying, we don't want to move that man. It's a car carrying member. Eh? They'll say it maybe for two days. Then from someone will come and say, Leak, now. Ah, relax. We're working with you. We know what to do. They calm down. Transaction. Okay, they'll help us. Then when as it will happen, they will leak it again. Against those people who have hope. They now start shouting. Then they now promise them another one. So right now, nobody seriously. I started this conversation over to I spoke with uh, people like I said, the only way out of Nigeria's electoral crisis is to take the bold decision, truncate INEC, create a different INEC that has these characteristics. We have time. If there is no grounds well, I mean, if there is no consensus, serious consensus among the political actors, among the political this, actors, because I mean, the present dispensation, they are not going to do anything. I mean, it favors them. President Tinubu has never, since been in power, said A about election. Electoral reform. You know, Yaradua yes. scaled through narrowly. I mean, Yaradua's own case is even more arguable. The failure of INEC is even more pronounced now. That one was story. We didn't have social media imagery. We didn't have IRF. So we can already say people are digging election in northern Nigeria. We don't know. Eh? But this one, we at least know that IRF was shut down. But Yaradua came out of it and said, no, this is. This is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. This is, I got a mandate, but it's rigged mandate. Prince Tinubu has not said anything about electoral reform, and it doesn't care about electoral reform. And so, is there any hope that things will change? I'm not too sure, because I have not seen the political moment. I see on our own part, civil society people, we have been saying this, but politicians are not saying it. So they have a different calculation. But my, I can tell you, Father, that look, there's no way this like will run, will run, there's nothing which will change. And I watch, since 2027 at least, the problem with presidential election in Nigeria has not been about logistics. 2007. 2007. The problem of election in Nigeria has been less about logistics than about deliberate obstruction 
falsification. Deliberate sabotage, sabotage of the process. So it's not like INEC is learning. INEC has learned enough. INEC has the capacity today to deliver materials as quickly as we. I mean, mm -hmm. there could be some gaps. Maybe instead of 9 o'clock, it starts yeah, on 10. Yeah, yeah. Those things are not the problem with election. The, the issue of logistics, which people overplay, it's not the problem. The problem actually is the they integrity. Have, actually, they have done very well with logistics. Yeah, so what's the problem? They can get it 30 minutes late, eh? one hour late, and still voting. But what happened after voting is what matters. The integrity, the crisis of election is the integrity. But it's Nigeria, not the logistics. But Nigerians are Nigeria, pretending. Nigeria is a strange place where somebody can come and say when Amechi was governor that he helped to rig elections. And nobody's prosecuting him. And he's going around. Isn't it the president now who carried Bulon Van? I said, yes, it's a money missing on <laughs> the eve of election. So, see, that's the point. The point is that we deceive ourselves that, oh, we're running for a fair election. I can run for a fair election. The basics, that's the point uh, of our father. Too much, 205 billion naira was given to this man called Yakub to set up a phantom called IREV, not used. Have you heard about any parliamentary inquiry as to how it was spent? The, the Labour Party is screaming, oh, the leaders, oh, these are all liars. They are all in cahoots. Labour, all this party. Is, is there any official memo signed by, even if it's only three senators eh, and three House of Reps, calling for a resolution to conduct an inquiry into how... What happened at what, with the 305 billion, billion, just wasted. So, again, the international community is in, also in conspiracy. Basically, because they don't care about whether... We, as far as they're concerned, we're not fit for democracy. So they are cynical about us. So next electoral circle, they're going to put another 200 billion eh, uh, to INEC and say uh, we're doing uh, uh, democracy promotion. Eh? And then some NGOs will line up, compare their own. In fact, the NGOs are part of this crisis because they consider me. When I was raising, um, they just not really correct. I was raising this issue. I was the only voice raising this issue that INEC is a problem of election. I was raising, raising, raising it. The people who are part of later they come back to the side, Sam, you are right. Too. Because you see, you can't access this fund except you're working with INEC. INEC does not just sit in the, in the big fund, INEC also controls who accesses the so called electoral funds. So the corruption is reinforced by the international community, different partners, everybody. I mean, they are always cynical. It's not like they they, 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 they they want corruption, but they just feel so, like... Yeah, so, can you, as we end this program, can you just outline what must we do now? What we must do now is what we said. We said we're going to develop a national action plan on this issue of electoral reform, bold reform, for example, judicial. The chief justice should issue a directive. The rules of procedure should be changed to align to normal evidence rule so that if somebody brings a cogent evidence in trial, the judge should look at it and pronounce judgment. It doesn't say it has been. It has, it has not been front loaded. loaded. That electoral cases are so generous. They are unique. They're not unique. They are part of a process of justice, like you pointed out. Mm -hmm. So we should de technicalize electoral procedure. That, so, I, yeah. You need to do. That's one. Um, so the first one is INEC. The second is even if you create a new INEC or you don't create a new INEC, there must now be a transparent process for rulemaking in INEC. We should see how this. Thirdly, IREF should be automatic. There should be no second guessing. Say, oh, the law didn't say. Once elections have voted happen, they should be Automatic. counted, signed, automatically. And that, those things of the IREF, people, once it's complete, people can declare the result. The notion that we wait until collection should be discarded. What, 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 is more, what is more authentic than election finish in a polling unit? Everybody sign off. The personal officer signs off. The, the agents collect their vote, you upload on the on the IRF that everybody sees in the world. That's the result. And so if any result, there should be a judicial totally, there should be a judicial direction to judges. That if any result presented diverges from real time transmit transmitted result, mm -hmm. they should presume against that result. So not to presume that whatever is collected is right and then and overlook. So those minor reviews, because the problem now is that go to court is now they, it has they, become a joke yes yeah, so so they, they have tied up the electoral system you can't win they now do uh, strategic rigging either after at the collection they declare whatever they want go to court and the court now tie a leg again and says co collect all those evidence they should swear to you sign for you your enemy who the 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 the, the, the electoral staff the so-called ad hoc staff the so-called professor they use and others they use who they bribe to read relation and the same people we want to collect their evidence. 
And when in the case of Kogi, for example, this, this same court ordered INEC to testify. The same tribunal received a testimony. They argued it. The opponent argued, don't call them. The court said, we'll call them. They came. They gave evidence. The opponent says, the government, the governor's side says, do not accept court, say we will accept. The same court tribunal had turned back and said, well, at the decision making, when everybody has gone home, the United States we made a mistake. That evidence is it's illegal. not it's not it's not something we can accept. Evidence that a, by court order, that's nothing more authentic than the court ordered a witness. And the witness testified. So this is prime evidence. Court says we won't take it. So they now clear the road. So if you don't take the evidence, the, the court appeal just bingo. Open and close. Oh, it was illegal evidence. Therefore, the court rightly, because the court itself declared it illegal. The Supreme Court is a work for them. So, now, so, everything, so you have to now change that, those. So at two levels, first, INEC, composition two, mm -hmm. how they manage election. Results have to be transmitted electronically. No, stop this nonsense collection. Once vote has finished, that's the authentic result. Person. Thirdly, court. Courts now have to set up new rules that allow judges uh, first, no fault loading. At any time, you the, can bring the evidence. litigant had op evidence, as long as he gives the other party opportunity to contest that evidence, is valid. And that's what I put in trial. As long as you plead those facts, that means you talk about those issues in your yes. affidavit. You have already presented it as issue. Then the evidence arrives to prove it when yes. you're about to prove your case. And the evidences don't need to be all there, all there at the point of the submit point on, of submitting of the affidavit. Uh, absolutely. You have to say, uh, Father, on Friday, did this, did that. So you surrender the affidavit. Then you go and look for the evidence. When the evidence now comes, as long as it's cogent, as long as it's legal evidence, as long as the evidence is probative enough. Uh, it uh, be and better. as we close, this thing about announcing, announcing a president and swearing in a president mm. while you have numerous cases in court, or governors while you have numerous cases it's in illogical. court. It's illogical. It's illogical. It doesn't it's, make it's, sense. It's almost stupid. I mean, why would you look at the, the so supposing the president is finally removed from office? Yes. Or, so you're basically creating a fake You have created, you have, you have installed him, you have called him Grand Commander of the Federal Republic. You, you have, have given even up. allowed him to make decisions that have financial consequences. He has, he has, become, he has become, let's say, chairman of ECOWAS. Yeah, well, so, so, so it's totally nonsensical. And I did, I, I said it that time. I said, all these processes, the courts can actually complete these issues. Said the same thing. Yeah, there are within, no, within three no months. issues to take out. Forget the evidence first. Issues about qualification, issues about FCT. Treat those issues quickly and dispose them. Just like what's happening with us now, for example. I mean, this is a matter. Did the 27 people retire, uh, or, or not? If they resign, are they foreclosed? Simple. That issue can be framed quickly to the Supreme Court. The Supreme you see, the, the, that's, that, that's, that should be an active, active management of case. I, I think it's lack of will, power, will I mean, and, uh, because, political will, yes, not, not because it, it was not possible. It's not, yes, because they just want the system to run and they don't care about the danger it does to poor public morality. Look at the crisis we're going to face in rivers. If the Supreme Court, if they quickly take that issue, forget other very, very issue and say, look, you guys resigned, bingo, you're off. Matter is off. So they keep it hanging. Now you see very dangerous orders arising from the failure of the system to respond quickly to a constitutional and, issue. And, and the recent one is very dangerous. Very dangerous Potentially issues. very Very dangerous. Destructive. So, because there's some kind of indeterminacy. We don't know whether 4 is valid uh, or 27, 27 is uh, valid. So on, the, on this note, we'll be bringing this program to an end. I've been speaking with Dr. Sam Amadi, uh, Executive Director of the Abuja School of, of Social, Social and, Political. and Political Thought. The actual the director, not the executive. Okay. Uh, <laughs> director, but it's an executive director work, Yes, right? but we are but we're not direct, we're <laughs> executive. <laughs> okay. And, and you do, as director, you do some execution, right? You you do some executive work. I good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, and, and we have been speaking about the election, the electoral process, <laughs> electoral law, and how we messed things up in 2023. What can we do? to sanitize the system before 2027. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.